Hey, good afternoon. It's Mike. And you guys all missed the first minute. I forgot to hit the go live button, so we're going to start over. Uh, so I'm Mike VA3MW, and today I want to focus on two of the programs that come with Smart SDR. That's Smart SDR CAT and Smart SDR DAX. Let's talk about CAT first. CAT is the program that manages our uh, multiple different communications protocols, but let's just call, we're only going to focus on uh, the old-fashioned pro, pro, the old-fashioned protocol called RS-232. So there's RS-232. You can hear it called serial, or you can hear it, hear it called CAT communication, C-A-T. They're all the same thing for the most part. And this is for the new user. So if you're already up and running and you're doing everything, I'm not going to teach you anything you don't know already. And hey, Travis, and, and hey, Dave. So uh, good morning or good afternoon. And Kevin, good evening uh, from ZL Land. Loving the sailing, man. From ZL, I'm a I'm a sailor. I've I've raced competitively, and the uh, AC75s are absolutely amazing. So a little brag out to the uh, to the guys down uh, about half a world away from me. So serial or cat uh, information. See, I shouldn't even be showing my messages because I can't do both at the same thing. So I'll just stop. So let's just talk about RS-232. It's been around forever. It's well over half a century old, if not more. And it was originally designed for machine-to-machine -machine communications. Uh, there's RS-232, and it's got some brothers called RS-422 and RS-485. But don't worry about those. But generally, they're all the same thing. Hey, Peter. So that's what RS-232 is. And Peter, I actually want you to listen to this one. So the... Every other radio out there has generally one port. Some of them might have two, but let's for the most part say that whether you had a TS-850, TS-480, FT-1000, ICOM this or ICOM that, they had one RS-232 port. Now, why do we care? Well, that's how we got basic information out of the radio. And that basic information would be generally frequency or band and uh, maybe the mode. Now, that's been expanded on to do a lot more with the radio. But in the early days, back about mid-90s, uh, when we barely were running DOS, uh, the we had some basic information. And uh, Kenwood was, a think about the first to do it, and their command set of cat commands has still been pretty solid ever since day one. So keep that in mind, because the protocol that all the flex radios follow is a Kenwood protocol. And uh, generally, like I said, all we mostly need uh, for the new user is what frequency am I on and what mode am I in? And I'd like to put the radio in and at a transmit. And so that's what CAT is all about. Now, Smart SDR CAT, uh, Smart SDR DAX, DAX, Digital Audio Exchange, is about how do we get the audio out of the radio and how do we get the audio back into the radio? And that's only for digital modes. And for the most part, and everything's for the most part, we don't use DAX for sideband QSO. Um, we do use DAX for N1 MM contesting, but that's beyond the scope of what we're going to talk about today. So that's what DAX is all about. And um, in a previous, and again, in the previous world, pre Flex 6000 series, if you wanted to do digital modes, you had the radio. And then you had a box or you built an interface box and it went into the line end of your computer. And the box wasn't very big. You know, I'm going to grab a, actually, okay, this is a wind gear, but you know, it was about that big. And uh, you would hook that into the back of the radio and you had to solder in all 13, you know, four of the 13 pins. But we had three things to worry about. We had to get the receive audio out of the radio uh, so that we could decode what we're hearing. And we're actually hearing some RTTY, which is pretty cool. We had to get some audio back to the radio when we wanted to transmit, whether it's RTTY, PSK31, even FT8. But we had to get that eight, ra that audio back into the radio. And then we had to put the radio into transmit. And for the sake of simplicity today, when we put the radio in, out of, in and out of transmit, uh, and there's a couple of ways to do that, I'm only going to focus on using cat commands. Uh, for doing that. And that's a command sent from the computer and say, hey, radio, go into transmit. Okay, radio's in transmit. Now we're going to send you some audio. And we do that using DAX. So that's just the simple things. And regardless of what program you want to use, what digital program like FL Digi, uh, WSJT, Ham Radio Deluxe, 
uh, the DX Commander series or whatever, you really only need to worry about three things. The ability to hear the, the audio from the radio, the ability to send the audio to the radio, and how to get it in and out of transmit. So let me share um, Smart SDR here. And uh, this is uh, Smart SDR uh, running here at my house on my Wyndham. And well, let's not worry about what's in the waterfall, but we're on 20 meters. And this is the button we need checked. And if we hover over it, it says uh, use DAC. You probably can't see all that on the transmission on the um, because it's on the wrong side. But it says uh, use DAX as the primary transmit audio source. Got it. Then I'm going to flip to another screen because I can only do one at a time. And uh, I want to see show you where that comes in. The other really critical thing is when we're receiving up here in the flag, and this is just happens to be for slice A, and this may get a tad confusing, but we're only going to focus on one slice and one DAX channel. We're going to say, send it out channel one. And that's cr critical. I could send it out because I'm using a 6600, any one of four channels, but to keep it simple, we're going to make it channel one. Okay, so let's get rid of that. Hey, Ben. Uh, now, so let's. I get it. This takes me a second to do because I have to uh, stop that and share screen. And I, lo I love this tool, but uh, it only lets me to share one screen at a time. So now we're going to go over here to um, this happens to be my remote desktop. And we're going to focus here on the DAX control panel here. And I've got FL Digi up because I've had a lot of quests re regarding FL Digi. Let's get rid of some stuff. So we talked about uh, our extreme one, and there it is. This is this one. And if I, um, it's my 6600 and it's connected to, um, at that IP address and it's enabled and it's connected to slice A and, um, and that's the rate it's streaming at. And because uh, it was actually, I'm actually on my maestro. So it, it, this is one other key part. DAX and CAT do not have to be on the same computer you're using to use the interface. So you could have a computer that you're running Smart SDR, and you can have a computer that you're running Smart SDR, CAT, and DAX. In my case, right now for this example, I did show you Smart SDR, but I'm actually operating from my Maestro, which uh, let me uh, let me bring myself up so I can see what I'm doing. But my my Maestro is sitting right here. And uh, for lack of a better picture, you know, I can uh, touch here, touch here, and you can see that I have DAX one. Okay. But this is what we do with the clients. You can have different clients doing different things. This again is a big departure from what we grew up with. Got it, Peter, so far? By the way, I pick on Peter, but he's a close friend of mine, so. He's my straight man. So we've got it set. Uh, we've got it set for one, and uh, we have. Um, let me go over here. This is the transmit stream. This is the stream being the audio stream going to the radio. This is how we control how much of it, and this is what we're receiving here. And if I was to turn this off by clicking here, and where you watch, this is the little. I'm in RTTY mode. We'll watch that when I click it off. That'll go away. And we bring it back. And this is a good test. If you get this far, you brought up FL Digi or whatever other digital program you have, how do I know if I'm actually receiving anything? So let's look at the FL Digi configuration. And while we're picking on FL Digi, it's the same for every program. You have to pick your audio that you want to hear. Where do you want to send your audio? And how do we get the radio into transmit? Now, the nice thing about all the flex radios is they will emulate a Kenwood radio. And so generally we call it a TS-2000 or a TS-480. I said 480 because I own a four, used to own a 480. So in FL Digi, this is under configure. There's a lot of stuff to set up here. The rest of it, you can go look and get on the forums for the FL Digi guys. But we want to, uh, in my case, I'm using the Hamlib. My rig is set to a TS-480. I'm going to do push to talk via Hamlib command. That means we're going to do it by a cat command, like a computer command, and we're going to send it to COM6. Well, heck, what's COM6? So let's go over here to Smart SDR for cat, 
And we look down here, of course, yes, I have a bunch of them. And I created a cat port. You, you just, if you don't have one, you create it. And the C means cat and the N1, N means uh, N1MM for your spots. And the W is you happen to have a wink here and P is push to talk, but we're not going to use that. So where's COM6? Four, five, six. And look at that process connected FL Digi. Great. These match. This COM6 and that COM6 are the exact same thing. By the way, the auto switch TX means if FL Digi goes into transmit to to grab the transmitter on the flex radio and make it the active one. What it really, you know, so you want that generally checked all the time. Uh, I can't think of a reason for most people not to do it. Cool. So that's what the cat says. Uh, and by the way, there's a log here for you techie guys where I can open up this log. I can open up the log. Oh, because I don't have it selected. So we're going to click it and open up the log. And look at that. There's all the cat commands going back and forth through the radio. It's really handy if we have a problem we want to. And, you know, we're saying, hey, did the radio actually go into transmit? But these commands are, you know, uh, FA, um, give me the frequency for VFOA, and it comes back, and there it is. And that's all cat command is. So perfect. So I'd said TS480, COM6. And by the way, if you don't have a port, just create one. You can hit add. And, I, you know, I could call this uh, my FL Digi port. The name doesn't mean anything. It's a serial port. It's uh, a flex serial port. It's gonna now. This one's gonna be a different one. It's gonna be COM11, but I want it associated with my slice A VFO slice A. Okay, I'm not gonna save that because I don't need it. But that's how you create a port. Okay, so we got that part done. Um, the rest of us you can sort of leave alone. The baud rate actually doesn't matter uh, because the software takes care of the baud rate. But if you had a different radio like a, uh, in the non, um, if you were in the non-flex world, then the COM port and the baud rate or the baud rate is super critical or it won't communicate. So if you happen to dig up your, I don't know, ICOM 7100 and you're doing the same thing, the baud rate matters. So let's keep that in mind. Now, that's good. Let's go over to the audio tab. So there's two audio states, capture, which means where am I listening from? So this can be worded as a bunch of different things. Capture audio, meaning I want to hear it, I want to decode it, and playback or sending or transmit or all the other thing. Hi, Bob. And uh, we have some people on here that can teach us a lot better than I can, but that's the idea. So um, we said we were going to use uh, DAX channel one. DAX channel one, look at this, DAX channel one. That one is critical. And if we pop that open, Holy crap, there's a lot of things. Take your time. Uh, this is um, a bunch of stuff I do, but look for here. It's not DAX IQ. That's the IQ stream, which is a special computer stream. Uh, it's just plain old simple DAX Audio RX1. And that DAX Audio RX1 is the same as this one, which is connected currently to Slice A. Got it? And then playback means transmit, and it's sort of put in computer terms for FL Digi. So we're gonna we need to play back. There is only one of these, and that's the TX stream. Uh, and here it is, DAX Audio TX, just like that. And um, I don't remember if I changed port audio or not. I'm just gonna hit save, and that part's done. And then, of course, with FL Digi, we have to close it. Now, we've got this. This is, the, I turned off the real waterfall because I'm actually looking at my remote station and playing waterfalls on um, over a remote desktop really takes a lot of bandwidth. But if I go to the sort of signal here, uh, it's pretty easy. The other thing I wanted to make sure that I didn't save, and I'm surprised nobody reminded me, you need to be uh, in um, one of the digital modes and uh, in your radio. So that's USB D is what we generally use. So if we wanted a different mode, I'm going to go up. Uh, oh, actually, let's back up. So I'm in RTTY. Uh, I was actually copying a guy earlier. Uh, he was playing his brag tape. Here we go. Uh, band conditions getting worse. Da -da 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 -da. And this is from Kilo Charlie Six. Bravo. Um, uh, Papa Hotel, look at that. I clicked on it. It filled in this call. 
So there's the simple part of FL Digi. And again, the radio is in USB digital mode. Now I'm going to change my radio over to USB digital. Okay, I lied. The radio is in RTTY mode. I'm going to change my radio over to USB digital. And you'll see now we get a lot more signal here from zero hertz all the way up past 3000. Uh, RTTY, we tend to run with really narrow filters. You don't have to, uh, but they're optimized for RTTY. And to make sure that's it again, guess what happens? We turn off the audio stream, the signals disappear. So it's always a good check if I'm listening to the right thing. And if I was to put the radio into transmit and call CQ, um, I'm and I'm still in RTTY. And generally, by the way, it's 45 baud, which is plenty fast enough. And if I was just to call CQ, uh, we went into transmit. You might actually hear the radio. We've got some TX here, and we can see that there's the transmit stream. And I'll just uh, wait for that to run out. Any other program you want to use, you the, whether, again, ham radio, deluxe, et cetera, Look for the configuration screen, look for the rig control. And, uh, and so rig, ham live is what I used in this case. Pick a, this one you want to pick Kenwood TS480 or TS2000. Get the right port you set up in uh, Smart SDR Cat, uh, and then push to talk via command. And there's another way to do it, but in, I don't think in today's world we need to worry so much about using. Um, push to talk ports like we used to, but they do exist. And um, and then see if you can decode what you're looking for. And, uh, and then if that all works, then worry about transmit and uh, go do some testing on transmit. Use the monitor to listen on the radio. And that's pretty much it. That's the way smart SDR cat and DAX work. So by the way, you can have as many of these as you like. If I also wanted to run another RTTY decoder, this is sort of the advanced stuff, I could do that at the same time. I can also run my logbook on the same time because I have multiple RS-232 ports. And in this case, I use a Windows virtual um, uh, desktop. I can flip over here. I can flip, oh, I can't do it. Just a second, I've got to drag this to another screen. Uh, just the way this works. Hopefully this won't crash things, there we go. If I go over here, there's my logbook. And uh, that's a cool tool built into Windows called Windows Virtual Desktop. You can look at that. And uh, and they can see that we're actually connected to the radio, um, you know, 14085. So I can run two programs looking at my radio, something that was incredibly hard to do pre-flex radios. And this is why the advantage, the advantage of using DAX and CAT and also the LAN connection that we're exploiting in so many different ways, whether it's the different clients, whether we're, you know, we're playing with our, uh, yeah, I keep pushing node red and it just keeps be, keep better. This is my node red window for controlling all my stuff on my remote station. Just all the things you can do to expand about. So if you've got an idea or you're not sure if you can do it, feel free to ask in the community or on Facebook. We'd be glad to help you out and point you in the right direction. We may not fix it for you totally, but it was food for thought. A couple of weeks ago, I think back in mid-December, I talked about using the USB port on the back of the radio for controlling external devices, such as tuners and et cetera. Great, powerful tool. Feel free to use those as well. So that's about all I have for today. I uh, I hope that uh, helps you a bit. And uh, uh, and if you have any more questions, now you can ask Peter, V3 Hotel Golf. No, I'm just kidding. And I know he just fell off his chair. And uh, But I thank you all for joining. And uh, that's Smart SDR, Cat and Dax. And if you, um, and by the way, if you're doing any satellite work, it's the same thing. You just double it up and you use two slices. And uh, Kevin, you're more than welcome. And uh, guys, have a great day. Thanks for taking the time to join. My name is Mike, VA3MW, and we'll catch you all later.